Not one, but two value-packed Irish whiskies on today's show. Value. There is one brand new and previously unreleased, another re-released because it completely sold out the last time. And I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say these won't be around for long. Let's drink some whiskies. Welcome to Whiskey and Whiskey. I'm the Whiskey Chaser Brian here in Christie's Bar Kenny. Hope you're doing well. So I have been on the lookout for one of these bottles for a while and in doing so, I reached out to the distillery where these were released from and asked, hey, what's the story? Any more bottles coming in my formal tone? The distillery came back to me and said, hey, what's the story? Sit tight, more coming. Keep an eye out for something else too. Okay. On Planet Whiskey, that means another new whiskey is actually on the way. And yeah, well, here they are. Released by Blackwater Distillery. This is the blended small batch two Puka whiskey. And this is the brand new release, the Puka single pot still Irish whiskey. Ta-da. So here we are, jam packed, bottles cracked, and ready to go. One new smashing pot still release and one re-release blended version that uses stout and rum to enhance the flavor profile. Enhance. Before we go any further, just so everyone is aware of two things. Firstly, I bought these bottles myself, therefore I'm not influenced by anyone here for this video. And secondly, the information on these bottles was a little light on the ground. So literally what I'm giving you today is all that's out there. Maybe a touch more, you didn't know. Touch. Buckle up. Firstly and foremostly, let's get this out of the way. These whiskeys were not distilled by Blackwater Distillery. They were produced for Blackwater Distillery by predominantly Great Northern Distillery and selected by head distiller and head nose John Wilcox of Blackwater. The blended version was also blended by John, um, who had previously selected the grain and malt that were to be used. The single pot still release is from Great Northern Distillery also, and has been distilled, well, I was told it was distilled to Blackwater Distillery spec. Uh, no influence from cask finishes, just finishing it straight bourbon. This is all about the spirit here. Anyway, if you're anyway curious about the name Puka, like I was and I found this online, An Puka is an old Irish folklore and the most feared fairy or type of fairy, possibly because it appears only at night and enjoys creating havoc and mischief. A lot like myself. The meaning of Puka means goblin or roughly translated means type of fairy. It can appear in any form, but it is closer to a goblin than to a Tinkerbell type of fairy. That's not like me, I'm more of a goblin not a fairy. Now, Puka whiskey is a natural follow-on from uh, Boyle's Gin, which Blackwater produced exclusively for Aldi as well, which has also won double gold at San Francisco's World Spirit Awards, which pretty much makes it one of the best gins in the world for 25 euro. Now, understanding this will give you a better insight into what Blackwater are all about. Seriously good spirits at a really great price point. They aren't trying to reinvent the wheel here, just bring out exceptional spirits. That's the ethos. They don't give a shite about fame or money. Like I said, it's about the liquid and quality. These Puka whiskies and these two in particular are created for Aldi as a collaboration between the two companies uh, with an emphasis again on quality. I think I already said that. The blended small batch two here is a bit of a Frankenstein whiskey of sorts where batch one was entirely blended by John Wilcox remotely using a combination of G&D grain along with other malts that were finished between three to six months in rum and ale. 
Um, they were, weren't entirely happy with batch one after it was kind of scaled and ramped up for mass production. So they pretty much went back to the drawing board for batch two. Now batch two has been somewhat reformulated. It uses malt that was aged in rum and stout as opposed to finished. And then it was blended into the mix along with the Great Northern Distillery grain and some of batch one sprinkling on top and some more moth that was finished in virgin oak casks, which I'm told was done to add in some sweetness. I don't have a number on how many casks were used here or the bottle number released. And to my understanding, the ratio of grain to malt is approximately 80 to 20, and this is why I call it a bit of a Frankenstein whiskey, but I like the idea of using aged malts that were in rum casks and stout casks, as opposed to finished in for a period of what you get. Now the pot still here is a 40% ABV pot still, and get this, 30 euros is what I paid for this. Now sadly, it's an only an Irish release and only available through Aldi stores. Same goes for the blended small batch, uh, Irish only release and only through Aldi, but with a price point of 25 euros. So 55 euros is what I paid for both of these bottles. And I mean, even at that, it's worth splashing out on, even if you just want to try it. I mean, I think it's great value. I think the small batch blended got 79 points on whiskey base or something like that. So that'll tell you just what you're in for. But yeah, 55 euro. I mean, come on. You couldn't bait it with a stick. Just a little side note here. These are just in Irish Aldi's for now. I have it on good authority, very good authority, that these may be coming to Australia Aldi sometime soon. Just a rumor I heard, could be true, probably is, I don't know. Now the pot still here is all about the liquid. Bottled just under its fourth birthday, 100% aged in bourbon. Idea here, again, focus on the quality of the spirit and let that do the talking instead of the casks. This was distilled by G&D entirely to Blackwater Distillery specifications and there is a high probability this will never be done again. There was only four casks bottled with a presentation box, as you can see here, all for just under 30 euros. I would imagine that when this one is gone, it's gone. If you haven't already, I would appreciate it if you please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Nothing but the best Irish whiskey releases coming to you weekly. It's what I do. There's no need to thank me. If you're sharing this content is thanks enough and following me because I can be funny sometimes. I can also be dramatic, but goddamn, am I good looking. As this is a Blackwater Distillery release, you should also check out our fancy new calendars, the Distilleries of Ireland 2022, which features a month of Blackwater Distillery. A never before seen picture of the distillery that they took for me, literally. They got in a photographer, they took the photo, they said, Brian, this is for you, you can use it, but we needed to get some shots done anyway, but you know, use this one. So, you know, in my mind, they took it for me because I asked them nicely. But generally speaking, they just took it to use themselves, but they let me use it. Every one euro of uh, the sale of this calendar goes to a charity, so it's for a good cause also. I'll leave a link down below to where you can pick one up for yourself. Thank you. Alrighty, so I'm going to start with the small batch. Um, now these boxes are that good that I actually struggled to get the tab open, but Let's run down through it one more time. So it's a blended version, non-aged statement, 40% ABV, malted rum and malted stout casks, aged whiskeys used, not finished, blended by John Wilcox, 25 euro and available from Aldi's across Ireland only. Sorry, USA, you'll just have to wait. And we pour. That's a good dram. So I've given this a little bit of a chance, uh, a minute or two, just to kind of open up and uh, give it a chance to breathe a small bit. So we'll do the tasting notes first, um, obviously. On the nose. Interesting. Um, it's not overly complex, but definitely getting the booziness from the stout casks. Uh, that's kind of, I find they stand out, that stands out the most from anything that's kind of finished in the stout cask. First one I'll get on my nose. It's that kind of boozy, alcoholy smell, like a beer smell when you walk into a pub or you get like, or a keg room or something like that, or um, you know, where there's been bottles of beer or something, that kind of booziness you get in the air. So it's kind of got that note to it. Rich, but then what you get is the rum cask coming through. And when I say that, I'm getting more of the sweetness. It's like almost like a, a, a tamed down Demerara sugar kind of note to it. Definitely getting the sweetness though. Um, interaction there between the two is quite nice. 
Little bit of clove, um, which is kind of giving away a little bit of its youth, um, a little bit spirity as well. Touch, not, you'd be surprised actually, it's not as much as you might think it was for a non-age statement, especially, you know, what the blend comprises of. Um, it's not giving that overly youthful nose, but it is there when you kind of get stuck in. Yeah, um, <clears throat> there's a little bit of caramel at the end. Surprisingly, this is not overly aggressive, spice-wise. Quite nice. Let's get a little drop in here. Let's launch it. Straight away, sweetness. Beautiful sweetness. I'm gonna guess that's from the virgin oak and the rum. Really pleasant. Little bit of youthful element here um, with some of the <clears throat> white peppery spices. Um, but then you're getting your booziness from the stout again, which is following on from the nose. The sweetness is lovely, really coating the tongue. Um, I wouldn't say it was overly sweet. It's very pleasantly sweet or nicely sweet. Um, does a great job of combining with the stout and taking away those uh, real aggressive tones of a young spirit. Let's have another sip, Sancho. So second time around, got more of the Rum influence, booziness is still there. Um, creamy, not as thin as perhaps the nose might lead you to believe. I think that the longer you leave this kind of air and sit in, in the glass and kind of just breathe for a little bit, the better that it's going to, the experience is gonna be for yourself. Now, try to do that with all whiskeys anyway. In general, I find most whiskeys, 99% of whiskeys, much better when you leave them breathe a little bit longer. But uh, the sweetness is incredibly nice on that. The rum, the stout, you're getting kind of everything that the nose would suggest on the palate. We only have a small little drop left. It'd be rude not to, really. Last drop was a little grainy. You get that. So the finish. Nicely chocolatey, kind of coming through there as well on the palate. Demerara working away. Um, the sweetness is dulled out a little bit. A little bit of the youthfulness, a little bit of the spiciness, but creamy. Not the longest finishes in the world, but worth every penny and then some of the 25 euro that it cost. To be fair, I have to, you know. Right, let's get onto the pot still now if I can get this box open. Good packaging, but damn is it hard to open. Non-age statement, 40% ABV, just under four years of age, Great Northern Distillery, selected by head blender and distiller, John Wilcox. 30 euros, 30 euros, and available from Aldi's across Ireland only at the moment in very limited quantities. And we pour. A healthy dram. Giving it a little bit of a chance to breathe. So let's do the notes now. Much more, I think, on my nose complex than what I would say the small batch was. Uh, what's very apparent is vanilla cream, cream and apples with a hint of pear. quite sweet um, on, the, on, the, on the nose. There's a, plenty of that coming through. A touch of clove oil, a touch of youth, touch of hay. Really nice. Um, let's get it on the palate. Let's it. On the palate, the apple Vanilla, definitely carrying through. Clove oil too. It's very creamy. Very cre creamy, not thin. Um, white pepper spices, although light. Uh, not overly in your face with spice. It's quite green, I think. Um, oily, green, warm. Apples, vanilla. Sweetness really coming through on that. Um, I'm gonna reserve my thoughts for the end, but it 
touch of oak um, there as well. The palette is matching the nose here quite well. Only on the palate, the one thing I would say is it's not as sweet as the nose would suggest, but that's just literally a critique because I can't quite possibly find anything else wrong with it. Not that there, there's nothing wrong with it. That's just a critique. Last little sup. On the finish then, your chocolatey note with a grain note but pleasant, uh, sweet, dry, woody, and spicy. That sweetness really does coat the mouth and even just the sides of the tongue, it's sticking out there now. Did I mention it was creamy? Nice hang time to it too. The chocolate kind of leathery note that you would, I kind of associate with uh, bourbon finished casks, uh, or bourbon whiskey that's been aged in bourbon, I always get on the end sometimes, well not all the times I suppose, but um, that kind of chocolatey leathery note standing out. Um, there is a little bit of a sign of youthfulness to it. Not overly aggressively though, you should note that. Um, you know, 30 euros, think about that. You're, you're, you're not getting a 20 year old single pot still here. I, I mean, you know, those characteristics, but for, for what, it, what it is at 30, 30 quid, it's impressive. Um, and I should say that for both of these, but I'll leave my thoughts now for a moment. So to sum up and to finish, we should keep in mind two things. The age, which is young, and the price, which is outstanding. Firstly, small batch. It's nice, but for me, I'm not a huge fan of stout aged whiskies. I've always struggled with them, however, it does deliver very well on the influence from the stout and the rum. It has a youngish but balanced flavor profile. Key word here, balanced. I didn't find it overly sweet, but it worked well with the stout. And if you like stout finished whiskies, then for 25 euros, this is a great everyday drinker. One for the shelf, certainly. Try it yourself. Let me know your thoughts below if you tried it or when you tried it. I need to reiterate, this is not stout finished. This was aged in stout and rum. I corrected myself. I heard it. The pot still. This is the real reason, admittedly, I wanted to do this video today. I just got extremely luckily, lucky in finding the stout release, so I thought it would make a nice comparison for the video. And to be honest, I'm glad I did because it showed me just how good the pot still is. I can't get over the nose on this. It's really well done. And by far my favorite out of the two, I will be honest. For 30 euros, you're getting a really great example of pot still Irish whiskey. Not overly spicy or too youthful for those that might be worried about that, but lovely flavors and a certain complexity here that surprised me a bit. I wasn't sure what to expect when I tried these today, but yeah, I, I can see why people do highly rate and regard these whiskeys. And you aren't going to get any better value for money when it comes to either. I couldn't even name four or three that would stand out when it comes to value versus flavor at this price point. Winners. So there you have it, two value packed releases that won't last long at all. I did pick these up about two weeks ago. I don't know if you saw last week's video, I was dying with the cold so I didn't get a chance to do it, but you may get them while they're hot. And make sure you pick up my calendar as well, the link below. This, none of this is gonna last long, especially at these price points. Uh, let me know your thoughts down below if you have had a happen to try either of these. I'd be interested to hear. So until the next video, I'm the Whiskey Chaser Brian, keep it Irish, it's launching.